<laughs> Salute, top of the morning amplified unit. The amplified man here, it is just past four in the morning. And I'm cutting this raw review for you guys, man. I personally wanted to go live today with this review. I know it's been a little bit. I think we just put one out last week, but that's not the fucking point. I wanted to go live, uh, but there's some business that needs to be taken care of starting early this morning. So this should show anybody newer to the channel just how dedicated I am to the channel and how much respect and love I have for you guys. Because I got my ass up even earlier. I went to bed around 1.30, got up at about 3 o'clock, so I got about an hour and a half of sleep at least. And I took care of some other business, prepped this video, and now we're going to start recording, man. So even though I wanted to go live, man, anybody that questions my, my passion for professional wrestling, for this channel, my love for this channel, man, <laughs> this is one of those go-to videos that you can point and go, damn, this dude's dedicated this dude's the best at what he does because he puts in the time and the effort. If only the old bastard in Stanford, Connecticut would do that for his product. But much love, man. And I don't need anything in return, man. Smash that up. Show that love right back. That's that's what keeps BC going, man. That and my, my coffee. It's so early. There's no coffee shop open right now. So thankfully, I mean, I was digging through the, I couldn't find, I thought I had a coffee left. Ice cold, man, in the far back, one last. I think this is a, this is a French vanilla Dunkin', man. Thank goodness. Because as this review goes on, man, we're going to be depending on this motherfucker. Anyway, <laughs> 4 a.m. Let's rock this bitch, man. This should be a fun review because we are even more out of it than usual. We had a record set last night in a championship match to kick off Raw Becky versus oh, Becky versus Bianca Belair. And when I say a record, it's not a good, it's the fruit roll-up record. That's right, man. The most attempts that BC has ever seen in a fucking match. Not including the 24-7 title. That doesn't count. That would be well beyond any record imaginable. That's probably over 100 with that fucking toy championship. But for an actual title match that's supposed to have prestige, I was dumbfounded by the amount of roll-ups attempted in this championship match between Bel Air and Lynch, man. We'll go over all that. Um, and we also have Kevin Owens, man, another loss. Is he inching closer to an AEW contract? If so, where the fuck does Tony Khan put him? Tony Khan isn't just getting people like Brian Danielson and CM Punk and Adam Cole, baby. He's over here signing Leo Rush and Daniel Garcia and Tony Nese and Bobby Fish. I mean, he's trying to get every fucking mid-carder imaginable as well. Eventually, Vince McMahon is going to be right about Tony Khan. He's going to fill his ship so, so much to capacity and beyond that that, that ship is going to start to sink. I got it right this time for anybody who caught that video yesterday. I saw, I saw some people telling BC that he botched. The fuck did I say? The the sink is gonna ship? <laughs> Instead of the ship is gonna sink? Some of you guys caught that in yesterday's video, that BC botch, man. I corrected it right now, man. But Tony, Tony Khan has to be careful, man, with all these signings. Can he get Kevin Owens? Anyway, Owens was in the main event. We'll be talking about that as well. He was in there with Big E. And uh, we had a no DQ contest. Um, we had some more yoga with John Morrison and, uh, the, the, we got more champions losing last night. You know, it, it's interesting. I saw a lot of people saying this was a good raw. Uh, this was a good raw. I kept seeing in, in some message boards directly after Monday night raw. And I couldn't help but think 
Did we watch the same product? Because, I, I mean, I saw more fruit roll-ups last night. I saw no DQ matches that didn't need to be. Two individuals that you just need to let wrestle for 10 minutes. There's a crazy concept. I saw more fucking yoga. I saw more 24-7 catering crusader chases. Uh, I, I mean, is it because we got some more wrestling on a wrestling show? Is that what we're calling good now? I got to be honest with you, man. I, I, this is exactly what Vince wants. He wants us to lower our standards to the point where we'll accept everything. And then we'll sit there with our wooden bowl and wooden spoon. We'll look up at Vince, Chef Vince, as he serves up that bullshit stew, right? This ain't tortellini or French onion soup. This is bullshit stew served up by Chef Vince. And we're sitting there with our wooden bowls going, please, sir, can I have some more? And Chef Vince is looking down at us. Of course you can have more bullshit stew. I knew you'd come around, little Timmy, little Joey. <laughs> Don't be that person, man, that's beaten down into submission by Vince McMahon. Because that's what I'm starting to see in the community. A lot of people are, are just tired, mentally and physically tired of calling out WWE on all their bullshit, all the bad. And they just, they're, they're now saying, fuck it. I'm just going to, whatever. I'm just going to accept it all and, and go from there. <laughs> that's what I'm starting to see in the community. Uh, I'm done voicing out. They're, they're saying that the, the louder we scream, the less they hear. The more we do, the less they care. Um, and I understand how exhausting it can be to, to fight back against the machine that is WWE. Trust me, for the better part of five years, I've been doing just that on the front lines for you guys. Uh, so I know how exhausting it can be. I know how how much energy we can put into this and how, how loud I can scream how for hours. <laughs> I can go on and on hours in these videos and especially live streams and, and talk about how shit this product has become. And, and it seems like nobody is nobody <laughs> of power in these companies will take notice. I know how exhausting um, but we, we can't just give up, man, because then we're just accepting less than mediocrity. We're accepting less than bare minimum. Um, and, and that's just unacceptable. In 2021, with where we're at in the world and what we, the talent that is in this company, the creativity that is actually there, but either, either people are too afraid to use it because they'll end up like Malachi Black, Alistair, or Bray Wyatt, the most creative son of a bitch is in WWE, and they find themselves into the unemployment line. Not for long for Malachi and soon Bray, because Wyndham Rotunda, because they're too fucking talented. But it's a shame, man. Mickey James had all these ideas, and she gets fucking canned. You know, to make room for people like Eva Marie. And it's like everybody who's talented with creativity seems to find the exit door really quick with Vince McMahon. So people are afraid to use that creativity. People are afraid to speak out about their characters and about what they want for those characters. And, and we as fans, we start to get demoralized. Our favorites find the way to out of the company for some fucking reason. So then we're stuck with Vince's bullshit stew even more. He, he, he keeps making more and more stew. And we keep telling him, no, we don't want any more. We don't want seconds. We didn't even want firsts. And it's a fucking vicious cycle, man. I don't know. It's early in the morning. Where am I going with it? Oh, yeah. Don't accept it, guys. I'm starting to see a lot in the community. I started to see a lot of people going, oh, that was a good show. Now, if you really enjoyed that show, if that really is what got you off, man, that's a, a good pro wrestling show for you. That's all on you, man. Good shit for you. Um, this is probably not the channel for you because we're about to dissect this motherfucking show. And BC is going to show you exactly why this was far from a good show. And, and, and if you... If you follow this journey, because that's what these reviews are, they're journeys, right? We, we start from the top, we go all the way to the fucking main event, from beginning to end, start to finish. We go through everything, man. And if you're able to go through the entire journey, you're going to see at the end of this journey, when we reach the destination to see if this show is good or not, 
you're going to come to your own conclusion on just how many holes are in this company, how many illogical gaps there truly are, how much common sense ain't so common because these shows are filled, filled with all these logic gaps and ignorant decision-making and reckless booking. And uh, a lot of people, even in this community, man, I, I saw like some relevant, uh, I think relevant anyway, people claiming this was a good show. I'm just not seeing it. I mean, have I been around long enough now? Is, is five years long enough to where I've become the fucking lead asshole in the community? I mean, I didn't think I was to that fucking point. But I seem to be the only one to see this show for what it truly was. More wrestling on a wrestling show is not going to make me say this was a good show. Let's talk about it, though, man. I've rambled enough about uh, what I'm going to talk about. Let's actually talk about the son of a bitch. After I pop a coffee. Let me get this going. It's just past 4 a.m., brah. Damn. The fact that I'm even getting a review out to you guys is pretty badass. So... Let's do this. Let's shake this bad boy up, man. One Dunkin' left, man. I was like, please tell me I got a coffee left. Because there's no shops open right now. So, uh, this was a uh, lifesaver tenfold, man. Leave it to Dunkin', right? I knew I had, uh, I thought I had one Starbucks left. You guys know I, I do all the icers. I buy them in four and six packs. Um, in the market, just in case early morning when there's no coffee shop open, I always have my, my iced coffees to go to. I didn't have any Starbucks left, man. That The casing was still in there that it comes in. The, the, it was like a four pack. I had one four pack left. It was just the fucking case, bro. I, I, I what a schmuck move. I don't know why I, I hate people like that. I, I became that person. <laughs> I took the last one and I left it. You know, that's like the douche that that takes the last sip of fucking ginger ale or orange juice or milk, and then they leave the fucking carton in there. Oh, bro. Well, I was that person to myself. I took the coffee, and then I left it in there as if I had one left. Anyway, I had a Dunkin' left, and that's all that matters. And it's pretty, um, <laughs> it's pretty coincidental, man. This spiel about Dunkin', I believe... They were in Rhode Island last night, and I believe that's like the Duncan Center or some shit is what they call that, man. So, uh, salute, man. The lifesaver right now at 4 a.m. for BC. French vanilla. Let's take a little bit of this down. Wake up a little bit, huh? Get amplified. Mm. Come on, bro. Come on, man. The greatest thing about, I, I, well, I used to say this, the greatest thing about being an adult is I get to drink a lot of coffee, right? I mean, there's nothing like that feeling. Having a coffee, first of all, for me is relaxing, believe it or not. I mean, I know we have these coffees and we get amped, but in the process of it, when I'm not doing wrestling videos anyway, <laughs> um, I, I, I'm nice and relaxed when I drink a coffee, man. It, it's my time to think. It's my time to collect it's just my, uh, it's my adult time, man, where I can just have a nice fucking, what I called, uh, and I say called, past tense, an adult beverage, and I fucking would just get my, my shit together, man, get my head in gear, what needs to be done, and then afterwards, when the caffeine was kicking in, man, then we just whooped that ass. I use past tense now because now I see kids drinking coffee, bro. I'll be in a Starbucks, and I'm not even kidding, I'll see the fucking middle school troopers come in. And they'll all get fine. I'm talking caffeinated, mostly like Frappuccinos, you know, they like the fucking, you know, they get the, the, the big fucking frozen drinks, half ice, some, some caffeine, all that. And they put the whipped cream on it and they put all this caramel on the side and, and then they take it and they start fucking Instagramming the shit. You know what I mean? You'll see them all, man. All these kids, they get their drink and they run to the corner and they get a good wall and they just start fucking taking pictures, you know? Oh, had some time, just wound up at a Starbucks. <laughs> About to meet Lily, got a Starbucks first. 
<laughs> now I laugh, but it's kind of sad because I'm like, fuck, man, like kids should not be drinking this shit, man. It's it's not the best for your health. Every now and again, it could be good for your heart and it's got benefits. But bro, kids got to be careful, man. I'm seeing these kids pounding down Starbucks, man. And I'm like, whoa, at 12, 13, 14, I didn't even fucking know what coffee was, man. I can't say I was doing anything better. I was drinking beers by like eight years old. That's another story. I don't advise that either. Uh, maybe I should have been doing coffee at 12, actually. Huh. It is better than beers. I digress. Let's get on with the review. This is what you're going to get, man. It's BC at 4 a.m. I don't know what you what you want, man. This could be two hours. Just me fucking saying some crazy shit all two hours. Who knows? Um... But I do thank you guys for joining me, uh, and, I, and I thank you. I put up several videos over the weekend, starting from before SmackDown, SmackDown's review, and yesterday an impromptu video, and I know that several thousand of you have already checked out each one, so I appreciate that so much, man. I appreciate the love, the support, all the ups that you guys take a moment to smash that, that little fucking button wherever it is. I appreciate the shit out of you guys, and that's why I'm doing this at 4 a.m., man. Uh, it ain't just for me. Trust me, man. Uh, I know you guys are depending on a review, and that means a lot to me that you come here for that review. All right, did we go about 45 minutes before even getting into the motherfucker? Good, that's what BC does. <laughs> for new subscribers, now you know. When you tune into a BC vid, we could go anywhere and everywhere within the whole journey uh, that we are on together. So, Raw Women's Championship, Bex versus Esther, starts the show. This is Raw for November 1st. Am I right? November? That's what my motherfucking board says. I had to check that shit. November 1st, man. Wow, it's already November. Damn. Well, anyway. Raw, November 1st, 2021. The Raw Women's Championship match, Bex versus Esther, Becky Lynch versus Bianca Belair. This was a 19-minute match with two commercial breaks, uh, totaling just under seven minutes, the two commercial breaks. So, if you take the 19 minutes, you subtract the seven minutes of commercial, my Steiner math comes out with 13 minutes of action with these two ladies. Not that bad. I mean, again, that's 13 minutes that we actually saw. Which mm, championship match with these two kicking off Raw? You'd want that at least 15, 16. I would prefer 17, 18 as the bare minimum. It should be a 20 plus minute classic that we're actually viewing. Anyway, that's my numbers, man. I have a whole nother standard for championship matches with certain individuals. And I know what time they should be given. Um, that's my own chart. I won't bore you guys with that. But this was 19 minutes, 7 minutes of commercials, leaves us with 13 minutes of action. It was a... It would have been a good match. I'll leave it at that. I was going to say the match was good, but... The fruit roll-up attempts were just off the chart. I, I don't understand why you would revolve a match around the fruit roll-up because this match was filled with more fruit roll-ups than we've ever seen previously. In fact, this match set the fruit roll-up attempt record. Get this. 16 fruit roll-up attempts were took place in that match. There were 16 fruit roll-ups attempted in this match. They just kept, kept trying to go for it. Clearly, both of these individuals, both of these ladies went into that match knowing clearly what the most destructive move in all of pro wrestling is. Both went in with the same game plan. If I can hit the fruit roll-up, I win the motherfucking match. <laughs> and that's exactly uh, what both ended up doing, man. This whole match revolved around that. Um, that they would do some other moves, and then go right back to the roll-up. Do some more moves, go right back to the roll-up. In fact, when it was all said and done, after bumping her head on exposed turnbuckle, Bianca Belair was actually defeated by Becky Lynch via... The awe-inspiring, ultra-devastating fruit roll-up. Yeah, yeah, 
Can you see that shit? That was Bianca's. I'm giving her the whole box. The whole fucking box is going to her. You hear that? Oh yeah, the whole fucking box. That's a filled up box, man. The whole motherfucking box is going to Bel Air for losing that match via the fruit roll up. But you see, she she hit her head on exposed turnbuckle. I know, I just said that. What the, it's still a fruit roll up. She she didn't sell it after she got pinned. She looked right up and she was looking at Becky like, damn, you got me. She wasn't selling that like she was knocked out from the turnbuckle shot. Go back and watch. I know I did. I know what the fuck I'm reviewing, man. That's why I accumulated the audience that I did in a short amount of time. That's why people come to this fucking channel. It's not a fucking a pat on the fucking back. They come here because they're going to get the utmost fucking facts and truth. She got beat via fruit roll-up, bruh. She gets the fucking... No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. She can't take the whole box. One of these is being saved for later on. You guys know what the fuck I'm talking about. But other than that, the whole box goes to Bianca Belair. Fruit roll-up record for most attempts in a fucking championship match last night. These ladies just revolved the match around it. And then in the end, while it was happening, I was saying, okay... It's too many fruit roll-up attempts, but at least this will hopefully mean that the finish will not be a roll-up, right? That, that's what I'm thinking. I mean, they're not going to have the whole match be roll-up, 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 and then the actual finish be a roll-up. No, they wouldn't do that. That's fucking too absurd, right? No, there's, not, there's, not, there's nothing too absurd in WWE, man. If it's too absurd, it means it's just right for Vince McMahon. And they actually did this. Now... Here's the thing, man, and there's a lot to unpack here, but let me just first, all joking aside, why was there so many roll-ups in this match? Isn't the point of the roll-up to surprise your opponent, right? It's the, ah, we were having a classic, but I caught you off guard, and I took the cheap W, right? Isn't that what the roll-up, I, I mean, that's what it was for all of time, in the decades that I've been watching wrestling, yeah, I think back of even classics like uh, the, the small package victory with British Bulldog and Bret Hart, which I bring up all the time. The Bulldog and Bret Hart, and you can also throw in Randy Savage and Ricky Steamboat from WrestleMania 3. You know, when you, you saw a classic, right? I, I mean, it was an amazing wrestling match, and they were drained. You could easily believe both individuals had nothing left. Bulldog Brett and Steamboat and Savage. Those are the two examples I'll give you, right? They have nothing left. They're drained. They've given you everything they've had. And at the very end, they fucking rolled you up and you didn't even have the fucking energy to kick out of it. That's what the roll-up used to be. Or you totally catch your opponent off guard, right? If it is quicker than a classic, a 20, 25-minute match. And it's pretty quick. Can I... Why is my... Why is my... There you go. It's so early, my left hand didn't want to fucking snap, didn't want to wake up, man. There you go. Right, it's so quick, the, the, the match, you caught your opponent totally off guard. I mean, those are the only scenarios where this would fucking work. In today's pro wrestling, the fruit roll-up has become the fucking move for everybody. I say this all the time, and I'm not joking, and, and, and you guys know I, I mean this wholeheartedly. I don't know half of the roster's finishers anymore because they're never performed. Back in the day, you used to know everybody's finisher. And I say it all the time, whether it was Ted DiBiase's Million Dollar Dream or Jake the Snake Roberts' DDT, uh, Ultimate Warrior's press slam into the, into the splash, Hulk Hogan's leg drop, Camel Clutch with Sergeant Slaughter. Uh, we could keep fucking going, man. Uh, uh, Legion of Doom with the fucking top rope fucking clothesline. Um... It's everybody, man. Texas Tornado. Tornado Punch. I'm just trying to think of all the old timers, man. Uh, Big Boss Man, that side slam. Uh, even into the newer days, man, with, with the Stone Cold Stunners, the Rock Bottoms, the Pedigrees, uh, Undertakers, whether it's the Last Ride or the Tombstone, uh, the Batista Bombs, um, 619 Rey Mysterio, uh, Eddie Guerrero Frog Splash, uh, Chris Benoit Headbutt from the Top. I'm just spitting off all this, man. My point is, you knew everybody's, right? And, and that's the importance of jobber matches, by the way. Because a jobber can be beaten 60 seconds, 90 seconds, 120 seconds. 
they get the shit kicked out of them. So the superstar looks like a superstar because they're beating the shit out of this young buck. No pun intended to AEW. <laughs> Not those young bucks. But they're beating the shit out of Danny Dipshit, Dugenheimer, Fuck Wad Fred, Luigi Lugnuts. Right? Peacock Pauly, Wally Walnuts. They're beating the fuck out of these individuals. These jobbers, they look like superstars. And at the very end, they perform their finisher. So it looks powerful. So if this dude with that finisher ever takes on another superstar that's been beating up everybody in this bath, and he's got a devastating finisher, and they meet at a pay-per-view, you have to tune in, man. It's exciting. It's fun. It's intriguing. That's what WWE doesn't do anymore. There is no more jobber matches. There is no more finishers, basically. Nothing relevant. Nothing you really remember or seems prevalent or prestigious. So, in turn, nobody's going to be excited to see A superstar take out B superstar at a C or D rated pay-per-view. Wow, man. That was only on two sips of coffee. We're starting to get fucking fired up, man. That was a good little spiel. Um, but it's the truth. You, you know, these days, roll-ups are, are, are being performed when it doesn't make sense. I use AEW with Britt Baker and Abaddon this past uh, Friday night, I believe it was, on a Rampage. It was the main event on Rampage, and I told you guys, a lot of people were saying the match totally sucked and this and that. I didn't mind the match, to be honest. Um, what perturbed me was the character Abaddon getting rolled up because it doesn't fit the character. She no-sells a lot of shit. I feel that fits the character. You're going to no-sell all of these actual moves and then you're going to get pinned by a fruit roll-up? It doesn't make sense. And B, she didn't take it well. It doesn't look like Abaddon should be taking fruit roll-ups. You watch a... Britt Baker shouldn't be giving them because it looked awkward. And Abaddon shouldn't be taking fruit roll-ups because it looked awkward. Everything about that finish was wrong. And that's what I mean about these promotions. Even AEW now, we're relying on roll-ups to get us out of jams. When you book something that shouldn't be booked because both superstars should not be losing, go to the fruit roll-up finish. If you have two superstars in there and you don't know how to finish it because you don't want to get creative, you don't want, you don't want to spend the time or the energy, give it a fruit roll-up finish. The roll-up finish has become the out for these companies, for these bookers, for these agents, for these creators. It's the fucking truth. I'm so done with the roll-up, but I've been done with the roll-up for years now. And I couldn't believe they put this. They revolved the match around the roll-up, set a record in a championship match, and then on top of that actually ended it with a turnbuckle face smash roll-up. Anyway, Becky Lynch retains her championship Backstage, uh, Liv Morgan squares her off face to face and Becky just smirks and walks off. So it looks like Morgan's going to be the next challenger. Now, listen, you guys know we love Liv Morgan. There's no question. Liv Morgan, uh, I can go another half an hour about how much we love Liv Morgan. And we know she's got talent. She gets better and better. The problem is this is not realistic at all, man. It, I mean, it, and it became even more unrealistic last night. First of all, Liv Morgan she's got a little bit of a losing streak, right? Until last night on, on a main event match where she beat Tamina. But before that, she was pinned by Carmella. I mean, this is what my notes have, man, and I've done my research. Um, pinned by Carmella on SmackDown October 8th. Then, was it one week later, she was defeated by Bianca Belair, actually, with the tribute to Troops taping. That was October 15th, one week after being pinned by Carmella on SmackDown October 8th. So the 15th, she's then beat by Bianca Belair. And then just last week on Raw, she was pinned again by Carmella. And then just last night, not on Raw, on a main event show that'll be seen, I guess, in a few days. I don't even know when that airs. I don't give a fuck. Uh, she beat Tamina finally. But before that, television-wise, she's on a losing streak. So you add the fact that Liv Morgan is losing all these fucking matches lately. You then add the fact that Becky just beat Bianca fucking Belair in an almost 20-minute match. How the fuck are we supposed to believe Liv Morgan even stands a chance with Becky? And again, this is coming from someone who you guys know from day one. I love Liv Morgan. I want her to get chances and opportunities. And, and I give you guys, I have given you guys over the past 12 months alone, many situations where they should be putting Liv Morgan. This isn't one of them. 
Because this is just stupid. It's not believable. We know she's not going to fucking win anyway. So this is ultimately going to be just another loss. So you say, oh, well, BC, I guess what we're going to hang our hat on is at least she gets the TV time. She's going to be in a big feud. I guess that's what we're going to say, right? But this doesn't hit home like um, MJF and Brian Pillman Jr., for instance. You guys remember at the last pay-per-view when they were leading into it, I felt that that storyline, everything was going to benefit Brian Pillman Jr. Even though we knew he was going to lose, and he should be, because at that point, MJF had just lost to Chris Jericho at the previous pay-per-view, whatever it was, so MJF needed a bounce back. And but, but I felt that this was the biggest moment for Brian Pillman Jr., man. Even in defeat, there was going to be victory for Pillman Jr., and I was right. The storyline was damn good, the match was damn good, and I feel everybody won in the process. But I feel like they're just throwing Liv Morgan out there. This isn't Vince McMahon saying, hey, I'm going to give you a chance, kid. No. This is because they're, they're running out of fucking options and possibilities already, even with this fucking shake-up draft. So they're going to throw Morgan to the wolves, basically. And then when it's all said and done, fat chance that Morgan is still going to get TV time and be thrusted into good storylines. Trust me on that. I hope I'm wrong. I hope this is a catalyst to Liv Morgan and great things to come. But I fucking doubt it. This is just going to feed her to Becky. This is all this is. This is much different than the Brian Pillman Jr. MJF situation. It's not believable. It's not realistic. And it's just odd to me. If Carmella's beating her all these times within the last three weeks, not that, not saying that that's what we need to see, and we know that's heel versus heel, but, I mean, wouldn't Carmella be asking for that fucking chance? Liv Morgan just comes across her in the locker room. And we're like, ah, oh, Liv, we love Liv. And then we're like, wait, Liv versus Becky? <laughs> she just beat Bel Air, bro. She just beat Bel Air. The fuck is Morgan gonna do? I just... I, I don't know with, with this... I don't know with this company, man. Uh, th th that's... That's like taking a Starbucks barista... And having them do a tune-up on the car. You, you know what I mean? Like, like let them make coffee. Let a mechanic work on the on, on, on the car. You know what I mean? Bel Air couldn't get the job done. Now we're calling it Liv Morgan? Don't you... This is what I mean, guy. Don't you want to build Liv Morgan up first? She's on a losing streak. If you take away the Tamina main event dark match that she won last night. She's on a losing streak. Don't you want to build her up to look strong before you just thrust her to Becky? Mm, fuck it. That takes too much time, BC. Vince doesn't have that amount of time, evidently. He's working with The Rock for the XFL. I bet you, bro. I don't think Vince McMahon is done with the XFL. Rock was not going to buy that without Vince's blessing in a, in a scheme, a plan, a game plan, if you will. Vince is in cahoots with The Rock. That's another story for another day. Anyway... Bianca gets almost the entire box of fruit roll-ups. I'm going to leave one because there was one later in the night. And you guys know what the fuck I'm talking about. But let's move on to Rey Mysterio versus Austin Theory. Ten min oh, wait, before I do, man. I talked about what's next for Becky, Liv Morgan. I don't know where Bianca goes from here, man. Uh, I, I, that seems to be it. Now, I mean, she can, I guess, say that her head hit the turnbuckle, so I deserve another match. Maybe that's what they do. Maybe they rush Liv Morgan and Becky the next week on Raw, man. And then they do Bianca and Becky yet again at like a Survivor Series, even though that should be SmackDown versus Raw, I believe. But you never know with Vince. I mean, you could easily just keep it within brand. I, I don't know. I don't know what you do with Bel Air. She's so fucking good, and she keeps getting better and better and better. And they have her defeated in 26 seconds at SummerSlam, and she never gets that belt back. And if she did, do we want hot potato? I, I don't know, man. They ruined this. When Becky came back at SummerSlam and won that title in 26 six seconds, I told you guys it was going to take a long fucking time to try to rectify this. And not only have they not, I don't even think they began the process. Bianca Belair is fucked, and that sucks. I love that girl. Fuck the fact that she's so damn beautiful. She's so damn talented. And she's fucked right now booking wise 
We move on to Rey Mysterio versus Austin Theory 10 minute match with a one commercial, thus we caught seven minutes of actual action on our TVs. The finish saw Dominic Mysterio slap Theory across his mug, slapping the yellow off his teeth, and Ray Ray delivers a 619 subsequently off of Dominic's slap. However, the ref saw Dominic slap the shit out of Theory. The ref saw that slap. So even though Ray Ray had the pin, the cover, the referee called the bell and actually DQ'd Ray Ray. So Ray Mysterio is like, God, oh, Dominic. <laughs> so when it was all said and done, man, Theory collects another W. This is one of those. This is one of those situations. You're right. You're right. It's like poor Ray, but good for Theory, right? It's like. Fuck, man, you're happy for theory because he's collecting W's. And this is what we say all the time. This is what you have to, you have to give these wrestlers chances, man. You have to give them actual pushes. You don't know what they truly have with the fans or if there's a connection unless they start fucking looking like winners. So it's so good to see theory collecting W after W already. And then you see on the flip side, it's like for Ray, it's not so good. Right, and I, and if you're Ray Mysterio, professionally, you're happy for Theory, right? But, but Ray, Ray Mysterio's got to be thinking, well, wait, my career's not done yet, man. Like, I can't be putting everybody over. I don't know. It's like this, uh, <laughs> like this discussion I had the other day with a friend. She, she, she's a good, good fucking friend of mine, and and we're, I, I forgot where we were headed to, man. We were going to. uh was it Pennsylvania? I think we were going somewhere, maybe East Pennsylvania. I forget, man, but we were, we were going through Jersey, and in Jersey, you can't pump your own gas. It's literally a law. I'm not even fucking joking, man. If you ever go to New Jersey, you can't pump your own gas. It's against the law. You have to sit in your car, and somebody has to pump it for you at the station. That's a real thing. You can Google it, man. New Jersey, you have to sit in your car. You cannot pump your own gas. So... You sit there like a fucking idiot doing the weird thing. You're looking in the mirror and they're fucking like looking at you and you're like, oh, you don't know if they're done yet. So then you don't want to go on your phone because then it looks like you have a servant, you know, and you're just like, hmm, little extra there, Douglas. I don't feel it's topped off. <laughs> you feel like you're being a douche. Um, you know, and you just don't feel right. So anyway, anyway, I think we're in Jersey. This dude, I'm actually, I had some business to do. So I'm passenger. My friend is driving. He hands the card, the credit card, back to my friend. She says, thank you. He says, you got it. Have a great day. And I stop the business I'm doing. I'm like, I'm trying to type on my, and I say trying. I'm one of those slow fucking typers. So I'm like this basically, <laughs> or I'm really slow on the thumb. But I stopped the business I was doing. And I looked over and I go, huh. And she drives away and she says, what's the huh about? Why you say huh? I said, no, I was just, just thinking about something. She said, what are you thinking about? I said, I just, he said, he said, have a great day. She said, well, what the fuck is wrong with the, have a great day? He said, have a great day to me. You don't want me to have a great day? And I said, Ay. now this is, I, I think I have a Larry David way of thinking. If you, any of you guys have ever watched Curb Your Enthusiasm, that's exactly how BC sees life. That I ever I question everything. Most things just don't make sense to me, or I have an ulterior way to think about shit, you know, outside the box. I have a very Larry David from Curb Your Enthusiasm. He was also the creator of Seinfeld. Um, I have his way of thinking. So <laughs> I was literally like, eh, I don't think I I if I had that job and I'm seeing 500 cars in a fucking shift. I don't think I'd be telling everyone to have a great day. And she's like, well, why, the, why would you not tell them to have a great day? I, I you know you're an asshole, but fuck. I'm like, no, it has nothing to do with being an asshole. It's just, I would give it decent, at decent, have a decent day, I, I said. I said, I would tell everyone to have a decent day because I think it's more realistic, right? Because realistically, you're going to have a, a decent day, right? It's going to take a lot to have a great fucking day. In fact, in a whole calendar year, I think on average, uh, a human being might have four great days. That's a fact. 
Like, great. You only have four a year, tops. I know, right? You never thought of it that way. But it's true. Normally, I mean, you might have uh, almost great, but no. Four a year. So... I said, realistically, telling people to have a decent day is not only realistic, but it's also a nice gesture. Hey, have a decent day, man. Right? I think that's more. And on top of that, now this is I may be a little extra of an asshole here, but statistically, I don't want other people to have a better day than me. So by telling everyone else to have a great day, the chances of me having a great day, especially if I only get four a year, they're not very good, right? So why I tell everyone else to have a great day while they're having a great day, I'm having probably a subpar day, right? And I'm watching everyone else with their fucking smiles and holding the door for everybody and buying the next person in the line their, their coffee and everybody's giggling together and smiling on their phones, walking in the polls and they don't give a fuck. They bounce off the pole and they're still smiling, right? Everyone's having a great day because I told them to have a great day. Meanwhile, BC's having a shitty day. So I told my friend, I said, statistically, I'm probably not going to have a great day on that particular day. Thus, I don't want anybody having a better day than me. I want them to have a decent day. I'm not that much of an asshole. I just don't want them to have a better day than me. So I told my friend, the best I would do is good day. Have a good day. And I still wouldn't tell everybody that because, again, I want the statistics to be more in my side. If I tell everyone to have a decent day and I have a really good day or even great day, then I'm on cloud nine. I can't tell everyone to have a great day when I myself want to have a great day because then we're all going to be fucking smiling like the fucking world is full of peaches and fucking coffees and chocolate chip cookies. It's not. So I don't want everybody fucking smiling as I'm smiling till we all look like a bunch of fucking fruit nerds. No. No. Then, then watching so many people happy would just get me frustrated, right? That would make me upset. That would get me fucking angry. Too many people are happy. Anyway, this was a real discussion that we were having. I said I would give people, I would tell people to have a decent day. Some people, maybe I will go as far as good. I will never tell people to have a great fucking day because I don't want them having a better day than me. Statistically, it's just not good. <laughs> so the point is, if you're Ray Ray... You definitely want to see good things for these youngsters like Austin Theory, but you don't necessarily want to want them to do that much better than you. <laughs> you see, you're not, you're not fucking, you're not finished up yet, man. You're not putting the boots into the closet and calling it a career, man. So I'm sure Ray Ray is like, what the fuck, bro? But uh, good for Austin Theory, dude. And that ended our number one. <laughs> oh, man, I don't know. I, I, I would like to promise you guys there'll be no more story time in this video, but I can't promise that. This is what happens when you start at 4 a.m. on an hour and a half sleep. Um, <laughs> but I appreciate all you guys, man. Uh, that are tuning in for the entire review. You guys are the fucking best, man. We're just shooting this shit. Let's be honest, man. Uh, I, I love doing it. I don't care what time in the morning it is or day, whatever the fuck, or how late at night. I love talking pro wrestling with you guys, man. So, um, e even if I get sidetracked and I go into fucking left field with a hockey stick uh, with story time. Anyway, hour number two, Seth Rollins, Big E, and Kevin Owens. They start hour number two, middle of the ring. They're all yelling words at one another. Um, this is all just to set up Rollins and Big E. Uh, down the line in Big E versus Owens for later in the night. So this was all just to set up those two matches. Um, there, were, there were some good lines when Owens was face-to-face -face with Big E and they were kind of cutting some promo work on each other. And uh, Owens said, no matter what, man, I'm going to give it my all, whether I have three months left or three years. So you got to believe that's kind of a little bit of a insight onto his contract, like real life contract negotiations. We heard he's only got a few months left. I didn't know if we had, if we knew the exact number, but we knew it was coming up for him to say three months or three years. That shows you that if he does extend, it's right around that three year period. Vince sometimes does five years, but a lot of wrestlers sign three year deals. 
So this sounds like he's got three months left and that could be it. Or he could sign for three years. So I like how he put that realism into the promo. And I love how, I, how Big E, I think it was Big E, right? Yeah. Well, who, yeah, because Rollins came down later. But I think it was Big E that told Owens, listen, this is this is real life. This isn't about, this isn't any Mount Rushmore of wrestling. You know, this is the real deal. And what he was referring to, the Mount Rushmore, you guys remember the old stable with Owens and Adam Cole and the Young Bucks. And when the contract negotiations, those rumors started to come up that Owens could eventually go to AEW, the Young Bucks and even Owens started kind of, um, I'd say, teasing that. <laughs> that Mount Rushmore, they were kind of, uh, they were kind of teasing um, the reunion. So you gotta know, you gotta feel anyway that these were all just like perfectly placed in these promo. I don't know. I caught that. Did anybody else catch that, man? BC caught it. I don't know if anybody gives a shit, but I like those little real life nuggets inside of promos because it's not, then you know it's not just for the casual fan or for the fucking pea brain fans that are going to forget what the fuck was even said six minutes later. They don't give a fuck. They're just going to accept all of Vince's fucking bullshit stew. And then afterwards they're going to go online and anybody dissing the product. I'm like, fuck you, man. <laughs> the show is amazing. Oh yeah. Tell me one thing they talked about. I forgot. It's not important. Tell me one of the fucking matches. T tell me a finish. Eh, I don't care. This person won. How'd they win? That doesn't matter. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you can't really fucking do that, man. Um, you know, you got to know your shit, man. And, and too many too many wrestling fans don't. So it's cool when they use real life shit like that. It, it makes the fucking, the fans that do use common sense, logic. We like realism in our product. We like believability that, that uh, those little nuggets are not so small. Um, and again, that set up Big E and Owens for later in the night and in, in the future, Rollins as well. Rollins would be ringside for that main event. We'll get to that in hour number three. Up next was Carmella and Queen Zelina. Thank you. That's Queen. Peasants. <laughs> um, Carmella and Queen Zelina versus Ripley and Almost Super. I'm out super naked ash. I had a match last night on Raw. It was amazing. We almost won, which means we won because we almost did it. Anyway, um, what did happen in this fucking match? Goodness, I did notes last night, huh? Eight minute match with one commercial. Thus, we saw five minutes of action. Zelina Vega hits almost superhero. With a sunset bomb. So Zelina pins almost with a... Not not Omos, which I almost I also call almost. Zelina pins almost super with the sunset bomb. And collects the W for her and Mela. This is great for Queen and Mela. They can use those W's, absolutely. I don't I don't want to see them as a tag team, like, for good. <laughs> but as, as individuals, they could definitely use those W's. So you bring them together, okay, man, they get a W. And it's cool for Queen Zelina Vega because she continues her winning streak. Zelina Vega is on a winning streak, man. Zelina Vega is getting an actual push. Zelina Vega looks like a fucking... an asset to the company. Right? This is what everybody claimed she wasn't getting when she came back. Those that called her a sellout and those that made fun of her because she came back and, and was a jobber. Well, now she's a winner. And people still don't want to fucking accept her. So I think now we can just declare that these people just don't like Zelina Vega. Right? It, it has, it's not about selling out because there's no company that has... That, that has a, a <laughs> there's no company that has unionization. It's just none. So the sellout's out the window. And on top of that, the jobber thing is out the window. So what you're left with now is a winning Zelina, and people still are trying to trash her. Come on, bro. Zelina Vega's on a fucking roll, man. You don't gotta like it, but <laughs> mad props to Zelina. Salud. Um, but on the flip side, man, why are your champions losing, right? This is the same thing with, with um, Rey Mysterio and Austin Theory. Right, it's great for one person. What about what the hell's going on with the other person? 
Yeah, are they just jobber status now? Is that what Ray Ray's going to start doing? Same thing here, man. These are your champions. Why are your champions losing constantly? Tag team champions. And this is, the, you might as well call this a contenders match. I don't know if they did up front. Maybe they did already. But you know they're going to use this now. Like, to get to a fucking, a pay-per-view match or a big title match down the line, we're going to get that, right? The story is going to be this match is happening because this team already beat the champions. Well, that's not a storyline. That's just stupidity at its utmost peak. You need to build an actual story to get to a title match in the future. You can't have the title match made because champions already lost against the upcoming opponents because then nobody needs to see the match again. Why do people get excited over something they already fucking saw? Uh, I'm using too much common sense and logic again. Even at fucking four, what is it? By now it's probably 5 a.m. I'm using too much common sense and logic. I can't do that while watching WWE. I know, we have to lower the standards, I'm told. I have to sit back, just relax, and enjoy it. I'm an asshole. I'm negative. I'm a fucking... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a fucking beast in the community. The boogeyman. Stop. Just say nice things, BC. You're right. I am a fucking beast. I am the boogeyman. Bah! <laughs> Don't stop by the channel if you don't like what I'm saying, man. I don't like champions losing. Not at 4 a.m., not at 4 p.m., not on a fucking Sunday, not on a Friday night. I don't like champions losing. On a Monday night, a Tuesday night, a Wednesday night, a Thursday night, a Friday night, Saturday night, it doesn't fucking matter. I don't want champions losing. Not until they lose the championship belts, the straps, the championship titles. That's right, I said straps. I like, uh, I, I like pissing people off when I say the straps. It's not a strap, basically. You yourself said it needs to be prestigious. That's right. And even back in the fucking 80s, we called them straps. Uh, this company has a million and one problems. That's what you're going to fucking complain about? The fucking reviewer saying straps? It's okay. It's okay, Bessie. I know you're angry, but don't be. It's a victory because we almost won. Yes, BC, you're being too negative now. We almost won the match. And if you almost conquer your dreams, then BC, you got to realize you conquered them. Almost is a victory in itself. Oh, that type of... See, that's the type of person, right? That the, 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 the Nikki Ash, right? You tell her to have a great day and she'll actually take that shit seriously and she'll be fucking skipping along into the coffee line. She'll be skipping into the fucking Home Depot, skipping in the Super Stop and Shop, skipping all around. Meanwhile, you're having your fucking shit day. The bus just drove by and fucking and, and splashed a whole puddle onto you. Your fucking coffee lid was a little bit up, so your coffee spilled out. Uh, you got fucking somebody crossing right in front of you and knocking your shoulder so your coffee actually all spills to the fucking ground. You just found out that your, your fucking, your, your bill never got posted, your, your electric bill, so you got fucking double charged. And while this shit is happening, Nikki Ash is fucking skipping and hopscotching all around you. All because you told her to have a great day. Mm-hmm. Don't do that because... People will take that seriously. For those new to the channel, by the way, you probably know what the fuck this is. This is a, this is a <laughs> snowball from the movie Secret Life of Pets 2, man. This is exactly who Nikki Ash took that character from, as you can see. Snowball. He was played by Kevin Hart. So I have a lot of fun with that. Wow. This review is off the rails, man. I kind of dig it. I love these little uh, these little chats, man. At this point, I'm probably talking to myself. I love it. <laughs> Fucking 12 people remain. <laughs> oh, it started out so well. Thousands watching. <laughs> 12 left. Carlos, Jer9. <laughs> Renee, SoundCloud. <laughs> 
Lucas, anybody still here? Fucking A. Black Ice, SOS, anybody? Fucking A, man. NJPW, anybody still here? <laughs> At least with the live streams, I know who's still here someday, you know, if, I, if the fucking screen's actually working and it's not that much of a delay, I can actually see who's still here. Here it's fucking crickets, right? And fucking, fucking 12 people just went down to 10. Fuck is BC top BC? Man, BC. No more reviews until after 7 a.m. BC. Um... Okay, so your champions are losing. I, I can spend another hour frustrated as fuck about that, which I am, but that's another story. Finn Balor versus Chad Gable. This is one of those matches with proper build. I'd be all in on a 25-minute, 30-minute, 35-minute classic. Gable versus Balor? You saw a taste of what they could do last night. Yeah, I'd be all in on a fucking classic with them. Give them real time. Put it on a pay-per-view. Give them a built storyline. And let them just rock it. Um, but there was no build. And it was stuffed in the middle of the show. Thus, they were only given seven minutes. Uh, and Balor squeaks out the victory after a top rope suplex in subsequent cradle off of the suplex. That was pretty decent. I mean, as somebody who doesn't like fruit roll-ups and shit, at least I would not put that in that category. That was a nice suplex. And then he cradled him up. I'm okay with that finish, actually. You, you know, because the blunt of the, whole, the suplex was the fucking move. And then you fucking locked him up. I don't mind that. Just like Zelina Vega with the sunset bomb. You know, you could say, oh, but she held the shoulder. Yeah, because it was an actual move, though. She does that bomb a lot, that sunset bomb. So, just like Zelina, you know, if you're doing a move, like, and, it's, and it feels like you're not just holding the shoulders down, I won't put that in that category. Um, so I like this with uh, with Bal. I just wish it was given more than seven minutes. I wish it wasn't in, in the middle of a raw, like literally in the middle of it. And uh, I wish there was a story, but I mean, there's a lot of wishes, right? But uh, this is Vince. He just rushed it, right? You get this. Sh he just rushes that match with no regard. No, no, I mean, he doesn't even think like, wow, this is a match that we could do a lot with. Story could be awesome. And then the match, man, we could, we, that could be a half an hour and they'll just tear it up and we don't have to worry about it. That's a half an hour of the show we don't have to worry about. And Vince doesn't think that way. You know, instead he wants to give, um, you know, he's got to make a segment for Eva Marie. So he's, he's got to make three minutes for that. And, and two and a half of those minutes will be Eva Marie running around in circles. Uh, he's got to make another two minutes for the Catering Crusaders to run around and chase each other to, to, to meet their steps goal on their Samsung phones. So he's got to make two minutes for that. And then he's got to make a minute for uh, John Morrison's yoga session and all of this shit, man. And, and before you know it, you're like, wow, all of that time could have went for a classic on a pay-per-view. Anyway, I digress. This could have been so much more than what it was. Uh, but Balor and Gable gave you a glimpse of what they actually can do. Dirty Dogs versus the Street Profits end our number two. This was a 12-minute match in length. Decent match. RK Bro was on commentary, and they added some extra life to it, I guess. I'm not a huge fan at all of RK Bro. I think Randy Orton should be doing his own thing as one of the top superstars in the company. But I know a lot of people like RK Bro. They're selling some merchandise, and when that happens, oh shit, man. Giggles and money for Vince. Um, Dolph Ziggler would end up pinning Montez Ford for a Dirty Dogs victory. Omos would then hit the ring, or a little before the match, actually. I guess it was a slight distraction, because Omos was already coming to the ring. And Omos, uh, we're continuing this Omos in Styles or in Riddle, Matt Riddle feud. I, I can't believe we're doing this. Styles didn't actually show up, just like last week. Styles probably said after that last match uh, in Super Showdown, he probably said, I, 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 need a f I need to get the fuck out of here for a minute. <laughs> AJ Styles is like, I just, I have to remember who the fuck I am. One of the best wrestlers in the world. And this past year, uh, nobody has seen me in that way. And, and I bet you AJ Styles is even starting to think, what the fuck am I doing? So Styles wasn't there again, but Omos, the past couple of weeks, last night no different, is continuing this feud, I use that loosely with air quotes, because it's not a feud. It's not a storyline. If, if you keep facing each other all the time, that's not a storyline. 
So Omos comes out and he beats up. I don't even know what happened, man. It was just a schmaz after that with Matt Riddle, Randy Orton, and Omos. And, and, and this this tells you that you're going to see more Omos and or, all of that. You're going to see more of it. You're going to see a 114th match with these two within one calendar year. Can you tell? It's, it's pathetic. It, it, it's truly what it is, man. That's the word I'll use. I, I, we're having a lot of fun in this review. A lot of laughs, story time. Um, taking it easy and just taking as much time as we need. But it, it, this shit actually angers me. That, that some... Some people like be like, this is okay. I don't see how anybody would think that this is fun anymore. It wasn't fun to be in the beginning with me. I didn't like this from the jump. But here we are months later in 15 matches later, half of them actual tag matches, and the other half was like Orton versus Omos or Matt Riddle versus Omos or Styles versus Orton three times or Styles versus Matt Riddle three times. How is this fun? I mean, this is like watching your favorite show and it's a new season, and you end up seeing the same episode r r from a previous season, and you're like, wait, this was supposed to be a new season, right? We were told this is a, a season premiere last week of Raw. We're getting the same fucking shit. And I got people telling me this was a good Raw. Well, I'm going through this, and I'm not seeing a lot of fucking good. We got some wrestling, finally on a wrestling show, okay. But the decision-making is the same. Uh, and I can't believe I'm the only one in the community who's got the balls to say it like it is. I'm not going to cower down to the masses and I'm not going to say, oh, you know, I'm giving up. It's too tiring to fight back against the WWE machine. No, this is the fucking truth. These decisions are fucking mind-bogglingly dumb to the highest levels possible and imaginable. And it continued into hour number three with Damian Priest versus T-Bar. And a no DQ rematch. This is a rematch from the previous week. This is what I mean, man. You're tuning into your favorite show to see a new episode because you're told it's a new episode and you see the same fucking episode. This was a 13-minute match, one commercial break, leaving 10 minutes of actual action for us to view. This was a good match per se, and I say that because... <laughs> There's a lot more to be desired if you just let them have a wrestling match. I'm honest with you guys, as I always am, man. I didn't need a no DQ gimmick for these two. Because they showed you previously in that first match what they can do one-on-one. -on -one. So just let them do that. Sometimes these gimmicks will actually hinder the potential of a match. As short as it was their first matchup... It showed the potential that these two can put on and put out there for us. So what the fuck is a no DQ? Why would you waste the gimmick, first of all? That should be used for people that should be in a no DQ match. You believe that the the hostility in the feud is, is to such a degree that you need something like a no DQ match. We're just throwing people in no DQ matches for no fucking after one fucking week of wrestling each other. Now, all of a sudden, this feud is so hot, it needs to be no DQ, man. I don't get... This is the same thing. Remember when they put Bobby Lashley in Hell in a Cell with uh, Xavier Woods? I think it was 24 hours after the actual Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. They just put them two in a cage. And I was like, whoa. Okay, there's a little feud. Like, little. I'll do the air quotes again. Because of him and Kofi or whatever the fuck it was. It, it was nothing that justified Hell in a Cell. Nothing. This is one of those things where you could save the gimmick and just let them wrestle and it would be better off. Sometimes the gimmick matches hinder the potential of a match. Remember that. This is one of those uh, one of those times. Again, I'll say it was a good match for what it was. It could have been so much more if they just let them wrestle. Again, 13-minute match. You take away the commercial, we still got 10 minutes. They were they gave them the time. So fuck the tables. Fuck chairs. Fuck rolling around the ring looking for weapons or, or, or taking time to, to sell a tables. No, just let them wrestle. You guys don't even realize. A lot of you guys do. Amplified unit members are the smartest wrestling uh, fans in the community. So I take that back. Most of you guys do know. But if you're newer, a lot of you guys, or even younger, a lot of you guys, or don't watch NXT, you guys don't realize how good 
Dominic Dijakovic, who plays T-Bar, unfortunately. You don't know how good this guy is. He's an amazing wrestler. You don't know it because A, he's not given the TV time. And when he does finally get a 10-minute match, it's got to be a gimmick. So he's got to go through tables and shit. And set up tables and run around the ring. and Come on, bro. I don't even know what I witnessed next. R-Truth is chasing Reggie backstage. Ninja Tazawa is like reading a book in the corner. I don't know what the fuck Ninja Tazawa was doing. Um, and, and John Morrison is doing yoga on some production equipment. And, and, and R-Truth like goes to Yoga John and, and, and asks for advice. Or maybe Morrison was just giving him advice. He's like, dude, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta bring together your mind, body, spirit, and soul. Only then will you find true victory, man. Or whatever the fuck. I, I have no idea what he was saying. But I was just like, wow. I was like, he... I mean, somehow they lumped Yoga Morrison, which is bad enough. They lumped him in there with the 24-7 Catering Crusaders, which clearly this was at a time where they were just refilling the triple-layered moose cakes at Catering, so they were able to take their little steps jog. Um, but they lumped poor Morrison. I mean, you look at the... John Morris, I say about Dijakovic, Morrison is, is, is such a great wrestler, and I said great you would not know that if you're a newer fan because he's not able to portray that. He's not able to produce his skills on television for everyone, everyone to see. Instead, this past year, he's been squirting water guns, dressing up as a bouncing bunny, and now doing yoga. I mean, that's John Morrison, guys. I could see if you know you, you want to do that with Santino Marella. Um, I could see if you want to do that with certain individuals that maybe don't have the skill as a John Morrison, but Morrison's not that guy. He can do yoga in his free time, which I believe he does, but that doesn't mean we need to see that on air. You know, uh, for next week, are we going to see him with DDP yoga with him and Mick Foley? Mick Foley's going to be there fucking <laughs> barefoot trying to get his fucking left leg in front of his right. Like, where does it stop? I mean, who's really giggling from this? I mean, who watched that segment last night? <laughs> this is funny. And they're calling up Timmy. Timmy, did you say this? And Timmy's like, Jerry, I thought I got it on replay. I'm, I'm replaying it right now. Jerry, let me call you back in 10 minutes. And they're talking about how fucking funny and fun this was. Is this part of the fun that we got on the Halloween Trick or Street fights? And all everyone dressing up this week for Halloween. Is this the fun that everyone told BC to relax and just enjoy the product? BC, you're taking it too seriously, man. Have fun, man. Adam Page, Hangman, is it? He's in a marshmallow costume, man. It's fun, and he's chasing the Ghostbusters. It's funny, right? You got trick or street fights, man. But you got Shinsuke Nakamura, one of the best wrestlers in the world, wearing a pumpkin on his head. It's funny, BC. He's got a pumpkin on his head, and he's getting clotheslined by Happy Corbin. Not finding the fun in it. I'm glad you are, though, man. You know what I mean? You're the type of person I will not be telling to have a great day to. <laughs> Big E versus Kevin Owens in the main event. 13-minute match. This was okay. Nothing special, but pretty pretty good, maybe. I, I You know, again, this is one of those matches where people are praising it, and, and I... I had to make sure that I wasn't sick. I mean, I had to go back and watch aspects of this match because I was like, did I miss something? And I'm like, no, this was a, this was not in my top fucking 100 matches of 2021 or even close. So I don't, I don't know what people are praising here. It was a decent fucking match. It's the best I'm going to give you. Have a decent day. It was a decent match. Um, but of course it's WWE, so we had to have a fuck finish the only way possible. Big E defeats Owens, and you know how Big E defeated Kevin Owens. He defeated Kevin Owens with the awe-inspiring, ultra-devastating Fruit Roll-Up. That's right, man. Kevin Owens is the latest recipient yeah, I would say join Bianca Belair, but I gave her the whole box earlier, so she's probably in the corner chowing down with fucking Ninja Tazawa with that triple air moose cake. Kevin Owens! Yow! That's for you, my friend. You have just gotten the latest 
Roll Up Award. Thank you. Thanks to the fine folks at Fruit Roll Up. This was uh, a crucifix roll up, too. So a little variation of it. Still a roll up, obviously. The actual sequence was Rollins clocked Big E because Rollins was at ringside. Rollins clocked Big E. Owen saw that, but decided to still cover Big E as if he was like, not a heel, but he was like, I'm going to take this fucking victory because I'm on a losing streak. So Owens is like, fuck it. I don't even care how this happened. So Rollins is like, pin him. And Owens is like, all right. So Owens pins Big E, but Big E fucking, Big E no sold it. He no sold the punch. He was like laying down, and the second Owens went to cover him, Big E just rolled him up. It was a, it's, it's, it was like a crucifix roll up pin. So just picture it. He's sprawled out. He's getting pinned, and then all of a sudden he takes, takes Owens' arm, and then he locks it with his leg, and he just rolls him up. One, two, three. Owens is rolled up. He's done. I mean, fight Steen. Fight. Forget fight Owens. Fight right. Kevin Steen. Before he was Kevin Owens, this dude was in some crazy badass matches. This dude was a brawler, a wrestler, a badass son of a bitch, all rolled up into one. A fighter, if you will. And Big E just rolled him up. Just fucking locked his arm and his leg down. And, and I was like, fuck, I can't do this. Like the kid from Toy Story, uh, fucking Christmas Story. I can't get up, guys, guys, help, I can't get up. I mean, come on, bro. You can't do that shit. And people take you seriously? And Owens is on a losing streak. You gotta believe, man. Post-match, by the way, Owens apologizes to Big E, but Big E says, nah, bitch. And he, Big E actually post-match, after defeating Owens with a roll-up, he uh, crucifix roll-up, he actually delivered the big ending to Owens as well. So to add insult to injury. You gotta believe, man, bro, the way Owens is being booked, is he done with WWE in that three months that he said in that promo? I think that there is no contract signed yet, and there's a good chance Owens is leaving. I really do. He probably already made up his mind. But Vince is not letting this guy win anything. He is on a losing streak. He lost again. He's taking on Rollins next week. It's already been announced. You gotta believe Rollins is gonna win that because they're setting up a big Big E versus Rollins match. So you can absolutely already... Uh, I'm nearly 100% sure on this. You can bet that he's going to lose to Seth Rollins next week and the losing streak will continue. And this would, this is what Vince will do. If he knows you're leaving or even has the potential of leaving his company, he's going to try to make you look like a fucking idiot in the process. Vince is a fucking dumbass these days though. And he's been for years. At one point, this dude was a genius in the 80s and the 90s. Now Vince McMahon, every decision he makes is a fucking, is, is a mind fuck. Because... If you truly want to punish somebody, just leave them off, right? Let people forget about them or just lose interest. McMahon instead actually utilizes them and tries to embarrass them, tries to make them look like fucking idiots. It backfires in certain instances, though. You guys remember when Matt Hardy, before Matt Hardy went to AEW, he was putting Matt Hardy into some fucking matches, and he actually accidentally put him in some decent storylines toward the end of Matt Hardy's WWE career, man. So Matt Hardy actually went into AEW pretty fucking, I, I mean, there was a lot of momentum and steam behind Matt Hardy. That's obviously died off now booking uh, for booking reasons, but there's a lot of steam around Matt Hardy. So that's what I mean. I mean, that backfired on Vince. He's got to be careful because even though he's on the losing streak now, man, Owens might find his way with three months left. If that is indeed accurate, what was said in that promo, in the word that we're getting, if that's true... You still got some months that he could accidentally go into a big storyline that elevates Owens even in defeat or even looking like a jobber. He might get some momentum. I don't know. Vince has to be careful with that, man. But for now, he's parading Owens out there in main events and he's having him get beat to try to embarrass him, I guess. And then post-match, he's got Big E also delivering his finisher. So he gets rolled up and then he gets the finisher. At least we saw a finisher. <laughs> Maybe not in the match after. But, uh, man, what's going on with Owens, man? And if he's AEW bound, Tony Khan cannot fit this guy in there, man. Bobby Fish, Leo Rush, Tony Nese, Dan Garcia, all these dudes just got signed. I, I don't even know what they're going. Now, you already got fucking people like Brian Cage complaining to Tony Khan into the world, him and his wife, that they're not being used properly. Well, you ain't seen nothing yet, buddy. 
Because you got to make a lot more room because people are being signed left and right by Tony Khan. Too many. It's done. I raised the question yesterday. It was rhetorical. I love how some people were like, no, it's not, a, it's not too much, Beasley. They're, they're going to they're gonna rotate the roster and then other people are going overseas and this and that. And I'm like, guys, it was rhetorical. I don't need anybody's opinion on it. He is signing too much. That, that's a fact. He's signing way too many talents, and this is going to piss off a lot of talent. This is going to eventually lead to booking problems. Tony Khan has to be fucking careful, man. I know for a fact this dude is signing way too many fucking people. It's not even superstars. He's just signing anybody he likes. No, no a lot of these people aren't even moving the fucking needle, but they can, they'll ever go to wrestling matches. Okay. Who the fuck is it? Who's attracting anybody to it? I can see great wrestling at the local bingo hall. The Amplified, man. Thank you guys so much, man. What a fucking, uh, it's probably went way over an hour, right? We're probably still leaking over to two hours as if this was a live stream, so. But again, I couldn't go live, man. We got business to do. I'm going to pound this and then we got to go hit a hot coffee. And then we got to go do a full day, probably... Yeah, I don't know if I'm even going to be able to sleep tonight, man. I, I, this is probably going to take me into the wee hours of tomorrow morning. But there's a lot of business to take care of. But I'm so glad that I was able to cut this video for you guys, man. Much love and respect. Thank you to everybody to smash that up and show that love right back. Uh, you guys are the reason that uh, this is so much fun. And uh, we will do this again. And I will try to get a live stream out there this week, man. I really want to do a live with you guys this week, man. And uh, shoot the shit. So we'll see. But that was Raw. And as always, man, there will be no NXT, I don't believe. NXT. Nobody watches this shit. Maybe we'll talk some AEW, actually, man. Um, we'll see what they present uh, for Dynamite this Wednesday. But there'll definitely be a bonus video way before SmackDown, Rampage, all that. So just be glued to the channel, man. Be subscribed, notified. And you guys will know when uh, BC content comes out. That's it. I gotta go. I'm already running massively late. For now, think be live, amped always. Check you later. Salute, amp unit.